Hi. 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 All right. So uh, this really just happened uh, not too long ago, and you seem like uh, it didn't happen recently. You seem completely healthy and fine. A few. Can I say first? Yes. I have my choices of I, shows. I know. Everybody wanted you. Um, and I chose you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm honored. So, you know, we all know for a long time the comedic timing is brilliant and the likability quotient is high, but I bet your fans would tell you that it's your big heart and where you put it in the right place. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to be with you. Thank you. All right, so let's, let's talk about you. You, um, when did you, you, it was like a week ago, right? Like not it was even... Labor Day. I finished okay. Labor Day. All right. So you, uh, tr how do you train for something like this? It's grueling. I'm, I love sports, and I've been a sports reporter. I respect them all, but I don't know that there's another sport that's this taxing, grueling, boring. I mean, I start in the Caribbean in January, and we're doing 12-hour swims, and then 14 hours, and the 18, 20, 24-hour swims, just getting ready for this one. So it's intense. So when you say like a 12-hour, so you you mean you're in the ocean and you do not stop swimming for 12 hours straight? The rules of the sport are: you're next to a boat. The boat has nutrition, electrolytes drinks, you know, power bars, whatever you need, and that boat is navigating, and you're swimming next to it and tracking it and going, but you can come close to the boat and get your stuff to drink. If a doctor had to give you a shot, you can roll over on your back and literally give a shot in your buttocks, but you can never touch the boat, nor get out on the boat, mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or be, touch any other person. So you are in the sea on your own. Right. And, uh... What are you thinking about when you're in there by yourself in the sea? You know, Ellen, um, it's, a, it's a real extreme state of sensory deprivation, unlike mountain climbing or cycling or running, where you can at least have nature, mm -hmm. where you can chat with a friend. You are alone with your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so bathing cap, goggles, you're turning your head 50 times a minute. Um, you're in a, in a woo. You know, so I read a lot of Stephen Hawking, those things, the cosmos, the meaning of the universe. I sing a lot of songs. I have a huge playlist of 85 songs. I count numbers, just anything to keep yourself sane. And then after a while, you're not sane and you're way off in hallucination land. Like what were you hallucinating? Were you, what were you seeing? You know, this time, last year, on the, on the last attempt I had done in 2012, I was looking under, and I never thought that the, the Wizard of Oz was anything particularly meaningful to me, but all of a sudden I was looking under, and I saw the yellow brick road. <laughs> I saw it. Mm -hmm. and, but it wasn't those Wizard of Oz people, it was those little guys who hold the uh, hi-ho, hi-ho. Mm -hmm. And so I saw them. Wait, I think those are the dwarfs. They were I, the dwarfs. OK, they're not in the Wizard of Oz. That's what I mean. It okay. was odd to see them there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and I said to Bonnie, my head trainer, and I said, Bonnie, uh, the little guys with the hi-ho are on the yellow brick road. She said, that's right. They're going right where you're going. So you follow them. So, you know, they don't, they don't try to talk you out of the hallucinations. Right. They just go with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so you're, and when you say a doctor giving you a shot, like what kind of shot would you need? You know, you're terribly seasick, so you may have some nausea medicine. At, at times you've got huge, you know, muscle aches, so you may have some pain medicine. Um, you've just got a whole plethora.